Hello and welcome. In this class, we'll explore some advanced options that we have for user management. And I'm explicitly talking about managing SSH keys and how to allow the access from the user from some IPs only. So let's go to our lab and let's see how that is going to work. SSH is a secure protocol that is going to allow the connection from the terminal. If we are going to establish a connection via CLI using something like Potty, then instead of using a username and a password, we can use SSH keys. The way how SSH works is pretty neat because we can have a pretty secure connection and we don't have to be remembering passwords. And also, that is going to be pretty hard to break. For example, you have a router. We have any amount of network devices in between, and then we have a user that is trying to establish a connection to that router, we can use the CLI. Let's say that we are using an application like Potty, and then this user is going to type the IP of the device and is going to provide a key file. When we are using SSH, there are two keys that are created. One is a private key, and the other one is the public key. This user is going to create that key pair. And to do that, we can use an application that is called Polygen. So that is going to create those two files. Then we're going to take the public key and we'll store that public key in the router. And then we'll map that public key to the user. For example, if this is the admin user, we are going to say that the key one, for example, belongs to the user admin. Then the private key will be stored in a secure manner in that user's device. The next time that the user is trying to establish a connection to the router, that user is simply going to attach the private key to the session, and then will try to establish the connection to the router. In that way, the router is going to accept the connection because that private key is the one that is mapped or associated to that public key. So that user is not going to require to type a password. It's simply going to use SSH keys. So now all the traffic going between the router and the user is going to be encrypted by using that key. Now all the traffic between that router and the user is going to be encrypted in the authentication process has occurred by using those SSH keys. So let's see how that is going to work in our lab environment. In one of the previous classes, we used Potty to establish an SSH connection to the router. If you don't have Potty installed in your PC, then you can simply go to potty.org. So let's see here if I go to the browser and you go to potty.org. I have the browser over here, potty.org org you can simply download potty to your pc the process is pretty straightforward you only download the file then next 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 install and finish and that's it so after installing potty you will have potty but additionally you will have another application that is called potty gen so you can see that one potty gen that application is going to help to create the key pair that is the public key and the private key those two keys are associated to each other. There is a mathematical process behind that that is mapping those two keys. They belong to each other. So now if I go to Polygen, and we can simply come here to this window, we'll click on Generate, and then to have a pretty random key, we can move the mouse over this blank area. So I will click Generate. I will move the mouse over here, so now the keys are being generated. After a few seconds, we can see that now the key pair has been created. Now we need to store the public key and the private key. And to do that, we have these two buttons here. So I will click, say, public key. I will store that key here. I will say key 01, for example, pub. So this is the public key. And then I will store the private key. I will say that this one is going to be key private. 
and then save. So now I have two files. I have the public key and I have the private key. So the next step is to copy that key to the router, but we're going to copy the public key only. To do that, we can simply drag and drop the file to anywhere inside the Winbox, and then we're going to have that file there. After that, we are going to import that key and we'll assign a user to that key. So that user will become the owner of the key. So if I go to this directory, you can see that I have the public key here, key01 underscore pub. So now I will simply move that key to my router. So we can see that I have that key in the file system. So the next step is to import the key and attach that key to one user. And that user will become the owner of that key. And to do that, we go to system, then users. And then here under SSH keys, we are simply going to click on import SSH key. We can see all the files in the file system. So I will select key01. And we can type the username. So in this case, admin and then import key. How this is going to work. So the private key is going to be securely stored in my PC. So I'm the admin user, so I will store that private key securely. So let's see how my topology looks like in this moment. So I have the key in this router here on the left. The router is connected to my home network via the cloud on GNS3 and is using the port Ether2. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add uh, the ACP client on Ether2 just to get an IP from the router here in my office. And after that, from my desktop PC, I will be able to reach that IP in that router. So I'm going back to, to the router, IP, and then the HCP client. And then I will add a new DHCP client, and that is on Ether2, because that's the port that is connected to the cloud. And I will click OK. So now it's going to look for a DHCP server, and you can see that this router got an IP, 172.16.255.101. If I check IP firewall and then filter, you can see that I don't have any filter rules because by default the CHR is empty. There is no firewall on it. So now from my network, I'm able to reach that IP, but I want to establish a connection to the terminal by using my private key. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to potty. Here I have potty. And basically, I will type my username, admin, then at, and the IP on the router. That router can be directly connected or can be in other country. As long as that IP is reachable, you will be able to establish that secure connection. So I have the username, at, and then the IP of the router using port 22 SSH. But now, instead of providing a password, I will provide my private key. And to do that, I will go here on the left to SSH. I will expand that section, and then we have auth. So I will select here, and you can see that here I can provide the private key file. So I will browse for that uh, private key. So if I go to that directory, I have the file over here. Then I can simply say open. And now if I click open again, this is going to give me that access. And now we have access to that device by using the private key. I don't need to type a password. I only have to provide my private key. And now the router knows that the admin user is trying to establish that secure connection. This is one of the advanced features that I wanted to share with you. So the next one is about the allowed addresses. So if we want to restrict the access only to a specific IP address, we can do that at the user level. So for example, here we have the user one, group full, allowed addresses. We have all zero, that means that that user can gain access to that router from any IP address. But if we want to restrict that access to a specific IP, we can do that as well. So let's see how that is going to work in my lab environment. So I will go back to GNS3. So if I check here in, on my PC, so 
So I will come here to the command prompt. And now I can see that the IP on my PC is 172.16.255.135. The IP on the router is 101. But additionally, I have 0T over here that has this 192.209. So I will add those two IPs as the allowed IPs. And if I do that, my user will be able to access the router only from those two IPs. So for example, I will add this one. I will come here to system and then users. I will look for the admin user and I will add one IP and then I can add a second IP and that is going to be the IP that I have here. If I try to establish a Winbox connection, so I will come here with my user. 172.16.255.101. You can see that I have access to the router. But what happens if I have something different? So let's say that instead of 35, I have 60, and here I have 219. So now, if I try to establish the connection again, that is not going to work. You can see wrong username or password. So I try to establish the connection, but that is not allowed because I need to have the correct IP. If I set those values back and I come to the Winbox, now I'm able to gain access to the device. You can see that the error was run username or password. It's not explicit about what exactly is happening, but basically that means that the user is not available from the IP that I was trying to use to establish the connection. So I hope that this class has been informative for you, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.